Welcome to Swarf and Chips. This week's takeover show, we have the Starag Group joining us. We have got the North and the South UK sales managers, and the show is full of lots of details. So if there's any Starag Group brands you're interested in, these are what's coming up. However, let's kick start because we're going to be meeting Lee Scott, who is the sales manager of the North. Thank you for joining us, Lee. Pleasure. So I do this every single time. It's Starag's takeover show. Can you explain, Starag, what you do in one minute? Well, Starag's message is engineering precisely what you value, you being the customer. And we are um, specialising in very high-end solutions for our customers who are looking for robust solutions, reli reliable solutions and profitable solutions. Well, the perception in the marketplace, because I've, I've been around a number of years, as you know, however, I've known Starag for a long time, but I think the perception in the marketplace is a Starag is right at the top of the expense chain, let's say. How, how can that change? What have you got to change that, Lee? Well, it, it's a very interesting perception. We hear this a lot in the market. To, to a degree, you're right, we are very high-end. But what we want to talk about today, one of the reasons we're here today, is to talk about Focus, which is a mainstream product uh, geared towards the, the supply chain and subcontract market that's affordable on a good delivery and fits alongside all of the other more higher-end solutions that we're, that we're well known for. Because one, one thing I will say is that, even talking about perception, you guys solution providing, you, you, you're right up there. There's not many companies that can compete at the sort of levels that you're at. Is that, is that correct? Well, it is correct. And when you look at the corporate presentations and you look at the, the customer names that we show that we're very proud of, of, uh, of supplying solutions to, they are your, they, they're your top class OEMs. And we're, we're, we're moving into the supply chain. We're very strong now in, in the first tier suppliers. And we, we, we want to offer that solution into subcontract as well. So throughout today, we're going to talk to Lee and we're going to talk to Paul regarding your brands because you, you're quite a big company, aren't you? Oh, no. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, the Hecate's uh, new focus line in a few moments' time. However, can you explain to me, don't need to go through the list of brands, but the brands and your scope of products that you provide? Well, pe people can come to us now, Lindsay, and they can uh, be involved in micro-machining. We could engrave the, the head of a pin or we can go right up to two to 300 tonnes in, in sort of heavy engineering terms. So we've got a very wide range of capabilities in, in, in a number of different marketplaces. What about Starag UK in particular? Well, Starag UK, we're, we're here specifically to support UK customers. So we have a, a UK North and South sales split. We have a couple of um, people working in, in the accounts department in our offices in the UK, and then everybody else is customer facing. So we've got 28 people currently customer facing, they're either service or applications, and we're recruiting, we're looking for, we're looking for good people now. So if there's anybody, anybody out there watching this, please send your CVs in. Because being a solution provider, it, it's not like you're gonna have machines sitting in the UK in a showroom. So I presume, do you use the AMRC, for instance, to actually take customers to show the technology and the brands and the products that you have? We do, we do, we do two things. We'll either take people over to the individual plants and, and we'll show them the machines there. Sometimes customers will let us use their site as a reference, but often our customers have um, uh, secrecy agreements and non-disclosure agreements, so we, we can't take anybody in. The AMRC is a great reference for us with six machines installed, and yeah, we can take customers in at any time to show them those machines. So with Starag, a, long, a lot of the time, as you say, you're a solution provider. So the, the lead times are quite long. Later on, we'll be discussing that you've got a machine which has got a three-month lead time as well. Absolutely. We're going to go see Paul now, but afterwards, I'll be asking you about the new focus line. That's great. Thank you. We're now joined by Paul Zajac, who is the sales manager for the south of Starag UK. Thank you for joining us, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. Now, with Lee, we've already covered Starag as a company, but I want to know from yourself, what industries are you really reining or focusing in on? Well, we're focusing on a number of industries, and the way we do that is through, uh, through three sectors, effectively. A aerospace and energy, where we're looking at uh, the structural parts of aircraft, uh, aer aero engine parts, uh, land-based gas turbine parts and uh, wind energy components. Okay. For, the, for the next sector we're looking at is transport and industrial, where, where we're looking at road vehicles, cars, trucks, off-road vehicles, 
construction type vehicles and uh, large components in general. The third area we look at is precision, where, where we're concentrating there on the medical industry, both trauma and in, 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 instrument parts, um, avionics and the, the luxury goods industries, watches, rings, etc. So real variety, you go from these huge parts to kind of the medium sized parts for transport, then you're talking about tiny parts, I know we've got some that we're going to see later on as yes, well. That's, that's they're, right. they're, all, they're all obviously important sectors to you, but where do you sell the most machines currently? Well, well, well currently with what's happening within the aerospace industry, um, that market is, is, is very important to us and we're selling uh, quite a lot of machines. That would stand to reason the amount of planes that are being built. Mm -hmm. Yes, of they course, yes. Parts. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so I know you're very technical and we're going to learn a lot, a lot from Paul later on. We've got lots of parts we're going to see. However, we want to learn about some of your brands. So we're going to go see Lee now and talk about the Hecate brand. Lee, what's the focus line range? The focus line is three machine sizes. It's 400, 500 and 630. And it's a, it's a range that's been set up to be manufactured in a production line. So the, econom the economies of scale suit us, higher volume sales, quicker throughput. We're delivering these machines in three months wow. and we're offering them with fewer options fit for purpose. And how do they compete in the marketplace with, let's say, other brands price-wise and technology-wise? They're absolutely competitive with, with the... Yeah, you know, the mainstream companies that most of the uh, the market picks the phone up to, and that, that's what we want. We want to be on that list of, of companies that are called for any horizontal machining centre. This is perfect because, as you said before, and I know we said it earlier, but solution provider. But now you're kind of attacking the mass markets we of are. we're providing a machine for your solution already. Absolutely. The other way around, and, and that, that's not what people think of us for today. So mm. it does take us into a new arena. Okay, but. Is it just a standard machine or can it be bespoke to clients' needs still? It can be bespoke. It, they, they, the, the focus line comes with a number of small options. You can change the spindle, you can change the pallets, you can change a number of things. If you go outside of that, then it becomes a normal machine again to us. So not, not, not a three-month delivery and a very good price. It goes back to the standard level. But it's the same machine. The, the, we've not compromised on focus at all. And, and talking a lot in the industry about automation, production for instance does it fit into that it category? Does. it does it's exactly for that so so automotive uh, supplies into automotive OEMs who want an FMS system with a good volume machine yeah. or general engineering it, it's it's perfect it's what it's built for thanks Lee no problem So another machine as part of the Charmin range is the Echo Speed, and there's something quite unique about this. It's got a five-axis rotary, but with no rotary axis. Yeah, correct. It's well, one way to sum this machine up is, 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 is that it's the fastest machine available for for producing large structural parts in aluminium, and it's a five-axis machine, as, as you quite rightly say, with no rotary axes. What is, what is no rotary say, axis? Yeah, how is what that is benefiting? Yeah. yeah, you're used to seeing five axis machines with, with, uh, with two rotary axes to, to, to create the five axis movement. With this particular machine, we're using parallel kinematics to, uh, to create the head movement that simulates five axis movement and does create five axis movement. So with it being configured in this way, is there any, comp uh, is there any compromise in the stability and the machining? Machining process? No, none at all. I've just said it. It's, it's, it is the fastest machine on the market for, for removing aluminium material from structural parts and producing a, a, a good structural part very quickly. You know, just by saying that, there is no compromise in what this machine, in, in how this machine is designed. So, what are the parallel kinematics for the machine, Paul? Well, within the head, um, there are three linear axes set at. Uh, 120 degrees apart from each other. If you move one of those axes and, and the other two remain still, then you get movement of the head in, 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 in one direction. So, so by programming these three axes, we can create the five axis movement of the machine. And, and the reason we do that is because the acceleration rate of the axes within this machine is very quick. And if we fitted it with rotary axes, the machine would always be waiting for the rotary axes. You cannot accelerate the rotary axes as quick as a linear axis. 
Oh, okay, so acceleration's put to the side, but what about the configurations of the machine? So the, so here, the Echo Speed machines can come with uh, a horizontal table with a, with a one meter by one meter pallet, um, which is called the FHT, which means it's, it's a fixed column with a horizontal table. Um, the F version, which is a fixed column with a moving table, which can be up, up to two and a half metres wide by eight metres long for that pallet. And again, just to explain that, we're probably moving something like 20 tonnes when it's loaded up with a component, and we're moving that table and, and accelerating it very quickly at 1G, up, up to 1G. So the, so the part and the table together are about 20 tonnes it could be? Yes, with the table, the pallet, be interesting to know unit. what would be the weight when it comes back out. Yeah, so so for a six metre uh, for a six metre part, a, a, a large wing rib, for example, rib one, on on, 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 on a twin hull jet, um, that that would go into the machine weighing around four tons, and once the machine's finished with it, it comes out weighing around 120 kilos. Could do with a human version of one of those. Yeah. Things, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how. Uh, what would be, let's say, the cycle time of getting from from the part going into the part coming out? It really depends upon the complexity of that part. Some of the some of these parts, um, the wing rib is full of pockets. So the idea is you have to go through these pockets as quickly as possible and, and mill them out as quickly as possible. Some of these parts would have five hundred and fifty pockets in them. But, but, but typically, for, you know, for that type of part, um, somewhere between uh, 10 hours and 19 hours, depending on the com complexity. So you'd be filling drums of swarf. How quickly? Is there a statistic that yeah. you've got, you know, yeah, two minutes per yes. hit us with that? This machine is available with a 120 kilowatt spindle, 30,000 RPM. Um, when the machine's roughing, um, you're removing um, with, well, well, with a 50 millimetre router tool, you're, you, you're removing from, from the billet around 10 litres of material a minute. And that's probably taking about 110 kilowatt to do that. Now, what that means is that if you take an oil drum, you'll be filling that with chips once a minute. Wow. Incredible. Mm. And you're also producing, during that period, you're probably producing somewhere around, well, more than 1,000 chips a second. And, and they're coming off at a high velocity. So there's a number of things that make this the fastest machine in the world. Can you just give me three examples of those? Sure. That's a, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the first one that comes into my head is the parallel kinematics, which I've already explained. And the reason that helps is, is, is because it's, it's much faster when it's going around the very, the very, very complex shapes that can be in some of these aerospace parts. It's not waiting for rotary axes to to it to catch up with the linear axes. The second is um, the acceleration rates that this machine uses. For a six meter machine uh, with the two meter width of pallet, um, we're accelerating up to 1G, that, that large part. But it's not all about acceleration. Acceleration is change of velocity over time. Jerk is, is change of acceleration over time. So jerk, would that mean every machine has a, has a, there's a jerk ratio or a jerk figure? And if so, how does your machines compare to others? Yeah, every, every machine within its parameters has, has jerk figures. Um, jerk, uh, well, the amount of, or, or the size of the jerk figure that goes into these parameters is really governed by the design of the machine tool. The higher the figure, the more shock that you're putting into the machine each time you try and accelerate. If you talk about a 1G acceleration, for example, um, lots of machines could have 1G acceleration. It just depends how long it takes them to get to that 1G rate. With, with high jerk figures, you can get to that rate extremely quickly. A good, a good analogy of that is if you go shopping with your car, you pick up your shopping, you put it into a cardboard box, you put it into the back of your car, you drive out of the car park. Everything is nice and secure. The box is, is, is nice and secure. It's not wobbling around. Nothing falls over. You're not dropping milk in your car and things like that. If you put it into a bag and then you accelerate at the same rate, there's a good chance that that bag's going to bend and, and eventually milk's fall everywhere. over. My milk's everywhere. <laughs> it's rather like a machine tool. 
Machine tools with high jerk rates are, are designed to be able to take this shot. They're not going to move. And, and, and that box, that analogy then is, a lot of that is down to the machine, the build of the machine, the construction, how the design, it all goes. Yes. How it all goes Absolutely together. it is, yes. And that, and that governs. These machines will have, will have jerk rates of up to 200. And what would a, a run-of-the-mill machine tool have, just to make a comparison? But it could be around 20. So 10 times as much? Abs absolutely, And yes. I think we're seeing on the screen at the and moment... this video... ...is showing... Yes, demonstrates ...the that. difference between your machines and, and some of the slower yes. jerk rate. And the third point is, is the spindle and, and the power of the spindle and when full power is available. As I explained er earlier, the spindles on, on these machines are 30,000 RPM, 120 kilowatts of power. But the 120 kilowatts is, is, is available from less than 14,000 RPM, which means you have that, th that area between there and 30,000 to find what's generally called a sweet spot for the cutting tool. So over 50% of your spindle speed, you're at full power? At full power. Full power is available. Full power is available. Yeah. Is this the most powerful spindle available for these machines? Today it is, but we're just finishing now with regard to the development of a 150 kilowatt spindle that, that will also be fitted to the echo speeds. Before we come off this subject, I'd, always, I'd also like to say that the, the 120 kilowatt spindle that, that you see on these machines is also available on, on the Starag STC800X for the machining of smaller aer aerospace components and an 80 kilowatt version of this spindle is available on the, uh, the Hecut X5 series. Again, perfect for small, uh, small aerospace parts in aluminium. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. What a great show. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope it's been really, really informative for you. If you want to contact the Starag group directly, we'll put the details on the screen. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Any previous episodes you want to watch, just click here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.